In our day, we often tend to smile at the people of the past. Whether in the world of science, technology, or politics, it seems like we're superior to our ancestors in every aspect of life. But we're not. Of course, there used to be ideas and customs that only leave us shaking our heads in disbelief today. Conversely, this doesn't mean that the ancients were not a few steps ahead of us in other things. What are those things, you wonder? Stay tuned and make up your own mind. Here are 10 things ancient races were way better at than we are. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to hear about one of the most bizarre things that the ancients were much better at. You'll never guess what it is. Concrete To start off today's video, we need to direct our attention to the ground. Have you ever been walking down a sidewalk that was just installed a handful of years ago, only to realize that it's full of cracks and seams? Sometimes you'll even see tall spurts of grass growing through these cracks, seemingly trying to reclaim the nature that we just stole in order to create a pathway. The reason for this is because, in all honesty, we aren't very good at creating concrete. Although it forms the foundation of our modern metropolis, today's concrete has a lifespan of just 100 to 120 years. The fact that many Roman buildings are still in surprisingly good condition is all the more astonishing. But what was their secret? The Romans made their concrete by mixing volcanic rock, lime, and seawater. This triggered a chemical reaction in which the lime reacted with the ash. The ancient seawater concrete was not only more robust and durable than today's building materials, but also more environmentally friendly. Modern concrete production is always associated with significant CO2 emissions. However, the Romans needed significantly less fuel for the production, which also meant that fewer pollutants were pumped into the atmosphere. Why we no longer make concrete this way today is unknown. In truth, it seems to be much easier to make it the way we often do, by purchasing a bag of concrete mixture and simply adding water to it. However, if we were to switch things up a bit and add in some ash and lime, it may help us create much stronger foundations for our homes, businesses, and, of course, sidewalks. Stone Carvings Many blocks of stone were worked in such a filigree and precise manner in ancient times that they repeatedly gave rise to the wildest speculations. For example, some people believe that the ancients couldn't possibly have performed such perfect stone carvings with their simple means. Putting the alien theories aside, we realize just how stunning the craftsmanship really was back then. A prime example of this is the archaeological site of Pumapunku in Bolivia, which dates back approximately 50 15,000 years. The massive blocks of stone weighing several tons have perfectly straight edges that interlock perfectly. The fact that the blocks don't show any chisel marks is all the more puzzling. So far, researchers have not been able to replicate the precision of ancient stone carvings. Agriculture when we think of ancient Mesoamerican cultures, images of occult rituals and gruesome human sacrifice immediately spring to mind. But of course, these exciting peoples had much more to offer, such as the floating gardens. These so-called chinampas are among the most unusual farming systems of all time, and today we can still marvel at many of these unique acreages in Mexico. The construction of the floating gardens was extremely demanding. First, long posts were rammed into the bottom of the bank. To this, the workers attached a floating wickerwork made of reeds and covered with mud. Since this mud from the bottom of the lake is extremely nutrient-rich, people were able to harvest up to four crops a year. Planting at the edge of the chinampas prevented the mud from being washed back into the water. A finished cultivation area could be up to 200 meters long, and small houses for the farmers were often built on it. Steel 
Forget modern blast furnaces. When it comes to the question of the best steel of all time, there's no way around the forging arts of antiquity. Over 2,000 years ago, people in the Eastern Mediterranean forged swords that were vastly superior to any other weapon. This legendary Damascus steel was so tough and sharp, it could punch straight through other metal objects. State-of-the-art investigations under scanning electron microscope showed how complex the production of Damascus steel was. At that time, people mixed other materials with the raw material in order to generate chemical reactions at the quantum level. Aqueducts and Irrigation Who would have thought that 21st century experts would look back 1500 years in search of solutions to water problems? In fact, that's exactly what's happening in Peru. The South American country has been confronted with a severe water crisis for some time. Environmental changes and the pollution of water supplies are forcing researchers to look for new ways out of this unfortunate situation. Although the word new is actually wrong, the key to solving the problem could actually lie in an ancient network of stone canals that the Wari culture created around the year 500 AD. The experts are currently toying with the idea of putting the old canals back into operation in order to be able to supply the population with clean water again. In fact, the Wari created an exemplary water saving system that collected the mountain water in canals during the rainy season. The cool water was then channeled into the valleys, which meant that the rivers always carried water even during the dry season. However, as is well known, the Wari were not the only people who had a talent for building canals, aqueducts, and cisterns. The Persians, the Romans, and the Greeks were among the masters of irrigation technology. Road Construction Nowadays, we're lucky if a new road network is completed within a year. The people of antiquity were also aware of the great importance of the connecting routes that connect cities and settlements with each other, which is why they built their roads efficiently and quickly. Let's just take a look at the Andean main street of the Inca culture. With a length of over 6,000 kilometers, the road secured the political and economic power of the Inca Empire. Spread across six different countries, today's World Heritage Site was lined with storehouses, military installations, housing estates, and overnight accommodation for travelers. The Romans also made a name for themselves as skillful road builders. Many of the ancient roads made of gravel, earth, and bricks are still in use today. Walls and Irrigation The walls of the Inca civilization were unique. Although the indigenous people didn't use mortar, the individual blocks closed so perfectly that not even a sheet of paper would have fit between the stones. In addition to this extraordinary precision, the Inca walls fascinate with the variety of their interlocking shapes and their ingenious alignment. The stone walls always incline a little inwards to prevent damage during earthquakes. To this day, we don't know what technique the Incas used to fit the individual brick together so perfectly. All previous attempts to imitate the design have failed. The Inca people were also great with irrigation. Some time-honored buildings from the Inca period also show that the indigenous population of South America had impressive technical knowledge. The construction of the Moray complex shows how well the Incas knew how to weave the natural environment into their buildings. Moray was built in three natural sinkholes. This may seem a bit unusual, but keep watching to see how this all comes together. Here, the Inca people created countless terraced plateaus, which are laid out in such a way that each step has its own individual microclimate. This made it possible for the members of the Inca culture to grow a wide variety of crops there. The water supply was channeled into the various parts of the facility via a complex system of canals. 
Incidentally, we find such Inca terraces not only in Moray, but even in the most diverse regions that were once inhabited by this tribe. The unique slopes serve the purpose of growing numerous foods and thus preventing food crises. Among other things, the Incas planted potatoes, corn, tomatoes, peanuts, and peppers here. It may seem unusual that such a tribe would be able to plan out and create such a complicated system for growing crops. However, these tribes seem to have had a better understanding of the natural world than we do, even after years of research have gone by. The Inca people had truly mastered the art of surviving and adapting to the natural world. Astronomy from Native American rock art to star charts in Japanese tombs to millennia-old megalithic calendars, there's no question that the ancients had a remarkable understanding of astronomy. Of course, people didn't have our modern space telescopes, spaceships, or probes back then, so it's all the more impressive how our ancestors were still able to interpret and record cosmological events. How the ancients managed to do this in detail is still an unsolved mystery. However, more and more new archaeological finds prove that the peoples in this respect by no means proceeded as primitively as was assumed for a long time. Urban Planning In the early 1920s, archaeologists in Pakistan stumbled upon the relics of a long-forgotten metropolis, Mohenjo-Daro. The experts assumed that the city was the beating heart of the Harappa or Indus culture in the 3rd millennium BC. During its heyday, Mohenjo-Daro may have served as a permanent home for up to 40,000 people, and the residents were able to enjoy many amenities. Among other things, the houses had brick bathrooms, with the wastewater being channeled into a complex network of canals. The inhabitants could get fresh drinking water from the cisterns and wells. Around the same time, the urban settlement of Corral was built. The town in today's Peru had an estimated age of around 5,000 years, which makes it the oldest known urban settlement on the American continent. The urban area was framed by six pyramid-like elevations, the largest of which was 160 meters long and 18 meters high. In addition, Corral had a circular sunken courtyard that may have served as an amphitheater. Particularly clever, the building had foundations made of reed netting bags filled with stones. This structural trick offered effective protection against earthquakes, which is why modern architects are still inspired by the millennia-old construction method. Weapons Admittedly, the weapons of antiquity didn't have the deadly power of modern bombs and rockets, and yet complex technologies were used on the battlefield at that time, which still pose great mysteries to scientists. Just think of Archimedes' legendary death ray. According to some historical records, the Greek scholar constructed a device that could set fire to enemy ships at great distances. In detail, it's said to have been a combination of mirrors that bundled and deflected the incoming sunlight. So far, experts haven't been able to satisfactorily imitate Archimedes' heat ray. Basically, however, the conclusion is that the use of the weapon was quite possible. Greek fire was also one of those weapons that caused fear and terror during ancient naval battles. The flames that were spat out by these devices are said to have been practically impossible to extinguish. What's more, some historians suspect that the mixture only ignited when it came into contact with water. Although the ancient flamethrower came to be known as Greek fire, it was the Byzantines who developed and used these devices. However, the exact details of the weapon were kept in the strictest secrecy. That's why the recipe for the liquid fire is still unknown. The instructions went down with the Byzantine Empire. Now it's your turn. What things from the past fascinated you the most? Did you know that our ancestors were so incredibly advanced in so many ways? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. If you liked our detour into the everyday life of the past, then please give us a thumbs up. 
Also, while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date from now on. Finally, take a look at the other videos of our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures in the credits. Thank you for watching. Have a good one and see you next time.